Hello and welcome to this very, very special episode of JJ's Cookbook. Now this is a very special episode, mainly because we at Rose Bowl are going to celebrate the successful completion of 200 episodes of JJ's Cookbook. Now I'm very happy and this episode or this uh, whole thing would not have been possible without your, that is my viewers, uh, support, love and encouragement. So as a gift from my Rose Bowl team and me, we are going to give you a gift. That is a one hour program of fun, uh, fantabulous um, recipes and food and information and lots more. Um, a one hour of total partying uh, for you. That's your gift. And um, we are going to have a real good time together, and so am I, and I'm very excited. Now, I just had my shower, had my breakfast, had my coffee, was reading my newspaper. You are going to come along with me, and we are going to shop together, and I'm going to show you exactly some very, very lovely tips, uh, very, very helpful tips about shopping, and we're going to enjoy it. So let me go get ready and um, get ready for shopping. You come with me. Now we've reached uh, Nilgiris and uh, they've allowed us to do uh, some shopping out here. I need a trolley. Yes, and let me just keep my this one. And my list, which is very, very essential. Once I've got my list ready, we're ready for shopping. And uh, first of all, well, we'll go to uh, the milk and cheese section, which I think is a bit crowded. Let's see. Uh, the first section I think would be the bread. And for my pizza sandwich, we need some bread. Let me see. Multi grain. There's so many varieties out here. Multi grain, white bread, sandwich bread. I think I'll need a sandwich bread for my pizza sandwich. Okay. And hmm, okay, that's enough. There's so many breads out here. There's some some nice raggy bread which is made of raggy which is supposed to be really really good next we'll come to the yogurt and cheese section now this has a lot of lot of noise out here um, yogurt yes I need some yogurt that is to marinate my chicken nuggets mm. yogurt is very good for you especially children uh, you know flavored yogurts these small things like flavored yogurts like strawberry yogurt and well this this is naturally sweet yogurt vanilla yogurt all these are good uh, to actually send to for kids lunch boxes because they're very small they'll give you a scoop with it and they can just have it once uh, they reach school so these are very good they come in lots of flavors strawberry uh, vanilla and um, pineapple whole lot of flavors okay so I need even mango now I'll need some oops I'll need some uh, mozzarella cheese for my pizza sandwich yes now uh, what we need is for our chicken uh, nuggets we'll need chicken breasts boneless chicken breasts so yes we've got boneless chicken now Better than chicken breast is actually um, 
uh, boneless chicken legs. That's much more juicy, more succulent and best for chicken nuggets. So uh, let me get some. Okay. Yes. Some lovely chicken for my chicken nuggets. Next we've come uh, to the dried fruit section. Now in the dried fruit section it's very very good to include uh, dried fruits uh, in your kids lunch boxes especially um, dried apricots. You get dried apricots they're full of vitamin A and a lot of vitamin uh, K and also lots of fiber in it so it's very very good for you and well it's good for your children Send, uh, you know, a few every day um, in, this, in the kids' lunch boxes. They'll enjoy and it's good for them too. Let's go to the veg veggie section. Yes. Carrots, again, very good for you. Good for the children, especially for the eyes. Vitamin uh, A, beta carotene, a whole lot of fiber. These carrots are really good. Celery sticks are uh, good for children. Uh, all you have to do is take a celery stick, wa wash it properly, take all the leaves out, don't need these, and um, wash this really well, well break it into two or three pieces and um, send it in your kids lunch boxes with again peanut butter or um, well cheese spread or mayonnaise or something, they can just dip it in and eat it, it's very very healthy, very good for them. Again apples. Green, red, all sorts of apples, okay, and pears out here. We have oranges, we have yellow apples out there. There's a whole lot of different, different apples and just cut them up uh, into pieces. Sprinkle a little bit of orange juice and send it for, to your, um, wherever, wherever, or you want to actually send it for your kids' lunch boxes. It will stay without browning. So that's a good tip. Cover them with a little bit of orange juice. Pears, again, very good. You can cut them into pieces and send them for your children's uh, or lunch boxes. So I finished my shopping. Now I'm ready to well, pay the bill. So now we're going to start my cooking section and that is I have here with me the executive chef of Keys, Mr. Basker. He's Hi. been kind enough uh, to do a cooking section with me. Now I have not yet uh, done any um, cooking okay. with anyone, okay. uh, especially chefs, uh, on my cook show till now. So this is the first time okay. uh, you've been here. and. Um, how long have you been working here? Uh, I am been working here since um, uh, eight months. Eight months. Okay. I have joined uh, uh, eight months back into the Keys Hotels, mm -hmm. and um, like I was there in uh, London for five years before. London. And okay. I was working with an uh, uh, A-graded uh, fine dining Indian restaurant there. Okay. Okay. Uh, so it is my pleasure to. Uh, be a part of this. Be a part of this program. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, we are planning to do a little bit of uh, cooking, just uh, very, very easy things so that you can do it at home. Um, first of all, we are going to show, uh, well, I was thinking of showing you a breakfast. Well, you can have it for breakfast. Um, sort of like um, coconut French toast. Now, you, you've all heard about French toast. Uh, I don't know how, what they call it out here. Yeah, they, they call it French toast. French toast, okay. Um, they call, um, it's very, very easy, very simple, because all you have is eggs, milk, sugar, then you've got your, and vanilla extract, and then you've got your uh, um, egg or French toast. Now, it's very, very easy. Anyone can make it. But I, okay, have created a twist here by um, substituting the milk um, for coconut milk and I'm going to have some shredded coconut. Now, before saying anything, uh, let's just get started, okay? 
Uh, I'm just going to. Shall we? Shall we just mm. shall I make slice it? it? No, it's okay. <laughs> um, yep. Okay. And um, we'll make the mixture. We need three eggs. Okay. Three eggs. And a uh, little bit of sugar because we are going to drizzle uh, some maple syrup or honey um, or even, you know, you can actually um, garnish it with a little bit of caster sugar once the French toast is done. So I'm just going to whip this up. Okay, can you just whip this up for me, please? Yeah. It's, it's, it's a pleasure to work with a <laughs> great chef. I mean, I'm, I'm just a person who just shows some things on the television. Can't call me a chef. Okay, now, in this, three eggs with a little bit of coconut milk. This is in lieu of uh, the actual milk, okay? So, coconut milk. This actually, this coconut milk actually gives a little bit of moisture and uh, a little bit of fat. So it actually adds flavor and it adds moisture. Then we're going to add a little bit of uh, coconut, just a bit, okay? Because we will be adding it once it's frying. That's it. Once it's, now you can add um, a little bit of um, vanilla extract, or, uh, half a teaspoon or something. But uh, here, I'm just going to avoid it, okay? Uh, a little bit of oil in this. So this is going to be a little bit sunflower oil, okay? Thank you. Now, once that's done, what we can do is, I'll just put it in a platter like this so that we can dip the pieces of bread, okay? Do you think uh, that that's enough? I mean, that much? Sugar yeah. is enough? Yeah. I'm just going to put uh, a teaspoon. Yeah. It's a teaspoon. That's okay. Good. Whoops. And in order for this, oh, isn't it hot? No, it's hot. Oh, it's not even getting out. Okay, and then I'm going to add a little bit of sunflower oil with it so that the butter does not burn. Okay. Once it's burning good. Yeah. Once we have it, just dip it in this beautiful, golden, gorgeous mixture. And I think two, two would be enough? Yep. Don't you think so? Yes. Just uh, let the bread actually soak this mixture. And let it be golden, not brown. Now, while this is going on, okay, we get to do for the for an extra coconut and crunch. Uh, we're going to add a little bit of grated coconut on top of these French toast, okay, the the top side of the French toast. You can uh, add a bit of sh uh, sugar if you want that caramelized effect, but uh, right now I prefer not. So, what do you think? Should yeah. I add a sh sugar? You can, uh, you can drizzle a little sugar on okay, top of that. Okay, fine, so. fine. As the chef say, says, uh, I'll just add a little bit of sugar on top of uh, the grated coconut. So it gives a love. So actually, you don't have to use maple syrup for this if it's very sweet enough. It depends upon, like, uh, if you are serving it for children, mm. they basically love the, the sweeter thing. So sweeter, you can yeah. give a ma maple syrup on side or yeah. you can drizzle it on top. Yeah, I think this needs to be. Yeah. Yes, it's perfect. Okay, so this side is done. We wait for the next side to be nice and golden brown. Then we can serve it on a. Uh, well, we can first transfer it onto a tissue paper. Uh, to our, to avoid the extra oil extra or the butter from the butter. bread, mm. as if it soaks it. So, it's so well, you can take option. it onto a kitchen towel. Yes. Um, Okay, I add uh, a little bit of uh, sunflower oil, or, or in this case, um, you can add um, extra virgin coconut oil, I just no, to let. We can remove those. Yes. Okay. Look for this. I have never uh, actually uh, done it on these type of pans. Okay. This is the first time I'm doing it. Okay. Now our um, our 
absolutely gorgeous coconut French toast is ready. Me and Chef Bhaskar has done this. Um, now, with this, well, if you're giving it for kids because it's, um, well, a sweet treat for them, we can actually drizzle some gorgeous maple syrup. Mmm, lovely. Okay. Otherwise, another option is... Uh, you can present a, a bit of uh, grated coconut, uh, palm sugar, either palm sugar or jaggery mixed up together in a separate bowl so that uh, your coconut gives you uh, a fiber and uh, your the palm sugar gives you um, iron. iron, yeah. And it is so full it's of a iron more sugar. healthier option. If you serve it for uh, adults, you, what you can do is uh, grate some little coconut and mix it with a little bit of jaggery or palm sugar, that is kariputi. Uh, you can mix it together and serve it with this. It's awesome, totally gorgeous. It obviously, gets goes along with the tropical coconutty yeah. uh, flavor. So, uh, thank you. This is this has been great. Now, let's get on to. The uh, dish what we, we and me and. Um, uh, the chef has decided is well chicken nuggets yeah yes. and this is my style of chicken nuggets in the sense how do you make your chicken nuggets tell me uh, like uh, our one is like we take the meat from the thigh part of the chicken mm -hmm. and then uh, we uh, marinate it overnight okay with uh, herbs and spices yes then uh, we'll put it in a egg wash batter mm, okay. then we'll roll it in a bread crumb, bread crumb. and then we we'll fry it okay now mine is a bit different in the sense um, I also use only Thai uh, meat because boneless Thai meat because that is much more softer and tender than the popular breast, uh, yeah. chicken breast meat. Chicken breast meat, meat tends to be a bit more tougher and a bit more uh, stringier. Mm, the grains, grains of the meat is uh, tougher. tougher yeah. Yes. So I suggest you to buy some um, boneless um, thigh and leg pieces. They are the best. And then cut them into small pieces, small nugget type pieces and um, marinate them at least for one day, 24 hours, yeah. um, in salt, pepper, crushed pepper and a little bit of garlic, a little bit of garlic. Okay. I'm just putting this just to show you. Actually this has been marinated overnight, has it? Yeah. Yes. Now, salt, pepper, buttermilk, Buttermilk or yogurt? Buttermilk. Buttermilk and uh, a little bit of garlic. Okay, and what we do next is, we just keep this. Here, we've got a deep fryer. We've got some uh, oil, sunflower oil, I guess. Yeah, yes, any flavorless oil, any refined oil, sunflower oil, canola oil, anything. Um, now, my favorite part uh, of the show is um, I have a lot of tension going around here and I need to bash up some people. Um, so more than bashing up people, what uh, I, I have here is I have some salted biscuits. What we're going to do is, Chef, um, you can do this. Once if you, um, if you have a very, very stress-filled day and um, if you your boys are not obeying you or <laughs> listening to you and uh, you you need to really um, what remove, my remove your attention the best method is listen to me okay um, take a zip pouch okay, okay this is like the huge zip pouch and take out all the air and just imagine these these are your boys <laughs> and go at them there. See how satisfying this is? <laughs> okay. Now, what we do is simple. These chicken nuggets are a breeze to make. What we do is take these nuggets, plop them, whoops, plop them into the bag. Next thing what we do is very simple. Just Roll it about. Don't be um, very surprised at my my violent methods, but I do things in a very JG-like way. My viewers know me. Okay, 
it's so much more easier and you don't have to worry about anything. Just make sure, make sure you fasten this properly, otherwise the whole thing will go down. Then what we do is, Chef, we'll just carefully lower these darlings into this. It should be on uh, medium low or medium high? Uh, first the oil should be on high. Okay. When it comes to the proper temperature, you keep it in medium high. Okay. So the uh, oil because, should be... Uh, because your chicken is fresh. Exactly. So it should be cooked. It's not cooked. It should be cooked through. Through. Yeah. So you need around uh, 190 degrees of temperature. Okay. Should be, it should have a, I think it should have a nice golden okay. color. I would advise you not to put too much uh, chicken at one go because the temperature of the oil will just go it's down. Golden. So you shouldn't put too many chicken pieces at one go. My uh, chicken nuggets are golden, should be crispy and golden. And I'm just going to transfer this. This is really good on uh, rainy days. Mm. Yeah? Crispy, hot. Yeah, crispy and hot. Just lazing around, watching television and eating chicken nuggets. Now, our chicken nuggets are ready. Okay? And I'm going to just, I've drained them in some um, tissue paper. Um, meanwhile, Chef is going to show you a very, very uh, simple salsa. Uh, it's, a, uh, it's a salsa sort of thing. It's a sal salsa sort of thing, okay? It's your own. Yeah, like it is a tomato based, uh, little spicier version of the uh, thing with garlic flavor. Okay, so go ahead. Uh, for this, we need uh, a bit of chopped garlic. Okay, chopped garlic? Yeah. Just a bit. Um, probably a quarter uh, teaspoon. Quarter teaspoon. And then uh, we can go for uh, the jalapeno dynamite, uh, sorry, uh, the jalapeno, what do you call, uh, jalapeno chilies, chopped. Jalapeno uh, chilies, uh, that is just half a teaspoon. Half a teaspoon. It's optional because everyone if you're won't not, be able uh, to. If you're not getting these jalapenos, uh, you can go for green chilies. Just green chilies. But these ha give you a lovely vinegary taste. Yeah, vinegary yeah. and spicy, spicy taste. Spicy taste, yeah. So, so uh, then you can go for little chopped, chopped tomatoes. tomatoes. A quarter cup. Uh, like a one uh, one tablespoon full. Okay, one tablespoon. Okay. And uh, one tablespoon of chopped onions. Chopped onions, a little bit. A little bit. Just go easy on that. I'm not very. I'm not a major fan on okay. of chopped then, onion, uh, raw chopped you, onions. Then you can uh, put some tomato ketchup into that. Okay. So easy. Just easy. We'll put some uh, flakes of chili. Oh, a little that. bit of uh, flakes of chili. Just give it a good stir. Stir. Mm -hmm. And what about the green chili? Uh, as if we said, uh, it is an option oh, okay, uh, whether okay, you are okay. getting jalap so uh, jalapenos or So it's jalapeno uh, peppers or green chili. Green chili. Not everything together because it's going to burn your tongue. And you just scoop it out into a bowl. Mm -hmm. Yum, yum, yum. Mm. Meanwhile, I'm just going to transfer these lovely, lovely chicken nuggets into a plate which is supposed to be served. And voila! Chicken nuggets with what salsa? Basque salsa. Uh, <laughs> uh, so it does. Chick, I mean salsa a la basque <laughs> and uh, mayonnaise uh, sauce, huh? Yeah. Okay. I want you to taste it and try it and uh, see how it is. I'm and you not, better say uh, it's good. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> uh, I'm not taking any uh, sauce so huh? that I can, yes, I can taste feel the full flavor. Exactly. Of that. Exactly. Meanwhile, I'm I'm a greedy pig, so I have to have my share too. Mm. Nice. That's very good. Very good. Try one more. Have one more. Mm, lovely. Now try with the. I'm going to try your your chicken. I mean, sorry, your salsa. Thank you, <laughs> salsa basco. Mmm. Mm. Good. Very good. It's got good. Flavors going on there. It's going to dip this. Can you get uh, the chopped jalapeno? Mmm. In that. Good. Nice. Mmm. 
I'm gonna also, let me just try this. Mm, the same sauce with a little bit of mayonnaise. Mix it up, sort of a cocktail sauce. Yeah. Try it. Good, huh? That's like on the spur. On the spur cocktail sauce, which is mm, yummy. So, I really, really enjoyed with you, uh, Chef Basker. Thank you, ma'am. And uh, I, uh, it, was, it was a pleasure, really. It was our pleasure to host you. And uh, inviting me and JG's cookbook team, and we were, we were very, we absolutely thrilled uh, to celebrate this wonderful occasion. Um, marking our 200 episode this one with you okay. and Keys. So thank you very, very much and God bless you. Thank you very much. Hi and welcome to this wonderful session. Well, the most interesting session of um, this program that is the interaction with my friends and my well wishes. Now we have a whole lot of um, lovely people out here. Um, my name is Shaina, Shaina Rajesh and I'm an architect. And I'm a great admirer of JG's cookbook. I'm Rojo John Videtl. I'm a businessman from Cochin. And I've been watching JG's cookbook for, I think, more than one and a half years, only because of the uh, recommendation from my younger sister, Veena. And special thanks to JG. Uh, my name is uh, Bob Greenia, and I'm a, uh, <clears throat> the director of a company at the Techno Park just up the road. And last week, we celebrated uh, four years of employing uh, local Malayalis. We have about 10 people. Wow, and, that's nice. uh, yeah, And I, I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward to trying JD's recipe tonight. Oh! <laughs> I'm Pauline Jarvis. Um, I'm from Australia. Um, we both live next door. <laughs> yes. We, uh, JG very kindly sends me beautiful cakes sometimes, which I shouldn't eat, but are very beautiful. <laughs> yeah, I'm Rajesh. Uh, uh, I'm from Kulam basically, and uh, I am the director of uh, architectural consultancy. Yeah, I'm a great admirer of Jeju, as Bob rightly said. And uh, yeah. Hi all. Uh, my name is Deepak Singh, and I work in Techno Park as a team lead. And it's about JG, That's it. <laughs> that's nothing else that 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 pulled me here. My name is uh, Asha. I'm a doctor. I'm a cosmetologist, and I've known JG for so many years. Uh, She's we're the actually one who makes me beautiful. <laughs> we're actually oh. good friends also now, and enjoy watching her show on TV. Okay, so I'm so glad so all of you could come along. It's it's a real pleasure, and it ha it was a, a kind of a big, big, long journey from the first episode to uh, the 200th episode of JG's Cookbook but it was worth every, every effort because I had come to know uh, about a lot of, lot of people. Yeah, and I, so many people who love me and care for me and show their, uh, show, show their sort of um, closeness to me. I think it's because I'm dealing with food. A food is like mostly, you know, joins everyone together because we all love food and we can't live without food. So I think that's why people love uh, people who are related to food. I think that's, uh, that's my philosophy. Anyway, now uh, what, as a beauty, um, a, a cosmetologist or a beauty person, what do you think is, uh, well, is there any such thing called uh, beauty food? Because you wouldn't believe it. There are people who ask me, JG, uh, is there anything we can do to enhance our, um, our beauty or is there any such beauty food as See, such? Actually, we have all heard of the saying that uh, you are what you eat. Mm -hmm. And uh, like we know that uh, what we eat affects our heart, liver, kidneys and so on. Skin. So since, uh, yeah, so since our skin is the largest organ in our body, body, it should affect our skin too. Yes. And so what you eat definitely uh, shows on your skin. Skin, yes. Okay, so as we all know, we should eat a lot of uh, food which contains a lot of antioxidants. Oxidants. And uh, especially fruits and vegetables and a lot of other foods which contain uh, these antioxidants. And what about nuts? Like I've yes, heard like nuts almonds are, are very good nuts for you. Nuts are also good. 
Uh, it contains uh, omega-3 fatty acids and uh, And also, um, they have natural oils which are good for your skin. Yes, they're good for skin. If you take them, your skin will not appear dry. Dry. Because dry skin is actually a sign of uh, aging. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It looks aged if it's mm -hmm. dry. And any small tip for the lovely uh, ladies out there? Um, <laughs> for anybody. Okay, men too. <laughs> <laughs> any tips? Um, from a cosmetologist, would you like to convey through? Yeah, you can uh, take in a lot of uh, fruits and vegetables, especially the dark vegetables and the orange colored ones, nuts and grains, cereals, um, and drink lots of water. And moisturize, and moisturize, yes, moisturize. And uh, reduce intake of uh, processed foods. Oh, you're, you're from Australia. And uh, what, what would you love to say about Australia what is what is the most popular food? I mean I know it's a uh, multinational uh, thing. Cuisine, cuisine so yes have, uh, everything is there yeah because we have you know that sort of population from all over the world but I, I think if you think of Australia um, you've got to think of the people and they're very laid-back mm -hmm. friendly people so they like you. Just like you, Pauline. Well, no wonder. Yes, sometimes. <laughs> Gosh, she's such a sweetheart. <laughs> but they, they like informal gatherings, you know. Oh, okay, so yeah. The, the Australian barbecue is really, um, if you get your friends or family together, then you usually sit outside and most of us have a very large barbecue okay. on our terraces. Mm -hmm. And um, so we would cook. Um, fish and prawns and meats and then have lots and lots of salads. Uh, Rajesh? Yeah. So what do you think about, I mean, you are a foodie. Yeah. And um, what do you really love about food? What, what makes you, what can you call a comfort food for you? Actually, anything which you cook will be comfort food. <laughs> but you haven't eaten anything of mine. Let's have it. So Why don't you bring something? See, I don't like spices that much. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I feel is like, I like bland food. And mm. uh, the problem is like, uh, spices give me uh, stomach problems. Okay. I mean, uh, just have to take antacid though. I go. think uh, I have some ulcers or something. Ah! Lots of Pepsi. I used to drink a lot of Pepsi. Which is bad. Please and do not have carbonated drinks. Yeah. How did you develop this passion for cooking? I never developed the passion for mm -hmm. cooking. It was always there. And, um, I always loved I always loved the smells which came from the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Especially while my mom used to bake cakes and things like that. And I used to wonder, oh, what a heavenly smell. Um, and um, I love all the, uh, the, 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 the noises you make in the kitchen. The clutter. The, the clutter. No, not the clutter. Uh, the utensil clicking and uh, things like that and uh, the chopping the ingredients everything about it it just uh, it gives me pa I mean it gives me so much pleasure and enjoyment and um, I like fresh ingredients and the beauty I like um, admiring the beauty of the fresh ingredients um, and then doing something with it without harming it too much that's why all my dishes uh, are like invariably kind of quick because I don't um, spend a whole uh, lot of time cooking it and um, totally uh, you know making it a mess a mess, <laughs> a mess of, uh, but I I do uh, passion I, I love uh, cooking for people and I love people who enjoy could you talk uh, about something about um, a balanced diet and how our foods would uh, actually affect um, our uh, 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 yeah, okay. in a bad way habits affecting our health oh, okay, in a bad yeah. way. Yeah. I think I think uh, there are many cultures around the world, and um, the English culture, such that it is, uh, suffers from this as well. That they get to like a particular type of food, and they kind of eat it over and over and over again, and. <laughs> Uh, I think anyone will tell you that too much of anything, uh, be that water even, um, will not be good for you. Uh, I think we've discussed salt. Uh, on the flip side, I actually nearly went into a coma 14 months after arriving here because I didn't have enough salt. Oh. Um, so th there's always a balance uh, with all kinds of foods and food ingredients as well. 
And if you, <clears throat> it's very typical here to eat a lot of rice, and uh, I, I find it difficult to do that. I love the spices. Um, I, where I live in England and, and in most places in England, uh, there are so many Indian restaurants of all types uh, that it's as much as part of our culture as, uh, you know, the English breakfast or hmm. uh, fish and chips. Hmm. Um, but Which uh, apparently I love. Well, it, it can oh. be very, very good. Oh. Mm, especially the newspaper ones. Uh, yes. Yum. However, I will say your fish here in Kerala is spectacular. Uh, ooh, ooh, yes. you, you're very fortunate to have one of the most productive Beautiful. seas in the world uh, with such a variety of marine life. Exactly. And you can pretty much eat most of it. <laughs> now, um, I would like to ask you all a very general question. There is this thing that... Um, is, do you believe in uh, having food at the correct times, like 8 o'clock for breakfast? And um, yeah. That is exactly what I'm talking about. Is, is, um, they, they did some studies, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and they, they found that people um, uh, could really regulate their um, weight easily mm. if they didn't stick to a rigid regime, regime both in the timing exactly. mm. and also repeatedly eating the same, same food. Same thing at the same time. The human is predisposed to change and if you have the same image over and over again, you end up, you can't see anything. Mm. If you don't, if something pushes your hand, you feel it and then you don't. If there's a smell in a room, you smell it and then you don't. You don't and it's the exactly. same with your body. You start to see, eat the food, mm. but your body just processes it, but you don't really get much out of it. You just put the weight on. If you change your diet, have a, a very balanced diet, you, it, people can find that they will keep weight off. Mm. And it's also much more exciting, exciting to change exactly. the food. I have read somewhere that one person who eats once a day is a yogi, two times a day is a bogey, and three <laughs> times a day is a rogi. <laughs> you know what a rogi means, Poli? Like uh, Do you know what a rogi means? A rogi means patient, a sick patient, person. Sick person. Right. See, actually what Bob was saying the, about the changes, I, have, uh, I think I have written on your wall once. Mm -hmm. see, you the, always write all sorts of things see, on my wall, so Veda I don't know says, what you according, write. According to what you call, this is the change is the essence of life. Change is the rule of nature. So anytime, whenever you take idli all the all the day, daily all the morning time. breakfast, you take idli, you will get bored about it and automatically you will stop having breakfast. Like I told you, up to a certain age, I was used to only Kerala cooking and Kerala food because I was brought, brought up my, by my grandmother. Mm -hmm. So I used to read in the novels about all these English, I mean continental dishes and all that, but I never used to get a chance to taste them. But after seeing your show, I found, I found out that it's very easy to make all these dishes. Because if you look at a cookbook, you see those long list, list of, of ingredients, herbs and which intimidates yeah, you. Yeah, and around two or three pages of the cooking directions, which mm. you don't feel like making. No. But after seeing your cooking, I knew that this could be made simpler. And I have tried out, uh, I mean, not much, but at least around two or three dishes of yours. And yes, uh, true. Dish, uh, yeah, and uh, I had suffered a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I like to add to this one as well because yeah. I'm not a guy who used to cook or something. I used to come and have food, that's it. Yeah. But after seeing JJ shows and all, I got interested and she makes it such a way, she makes it with love. I think that's what drives her. Yes. That's what making us drop her. What I was find in finding interesting in your <coughs> cookery show is, it's totally unique than the other regular shows. The cookery shows I used to see, Malipuri, what all, all ingredients, they all keep it there. But in your show, only few things are displayed. And with that, not only that, if you are concentrating on strawberry, hmm. if you are not seen, she used to wear a dress according to that color. If it is a green apple, she used to wear a green dress. So it is more interesting to me. <laughs> See, he actually washes my dresses. <laughs> See, I, I found the friends, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> see, it's the not the glamour food, but... Yeah. The no, glamour is another part, which I... See, definitely I concentrate on that. See, because whatever you make... On what? <laughs> on the apples and the food, and the food, and the glamour. 
see, the, the ultimate thing is how you display that, and that's the ultimate thing. Then, the most ultimate thing I like is that the tune that goes to the finale of that Rose Bowl, your thing. That's, I, I've never recorded to Say, say, I mean, thank, the, thank Rose Bowl for that. That song, right? That song. Thanks. It's instrumental. No, that's an instrumental. I don't know, you should, you should ask uh, Rose Bowl. Even I love that song. Uh, it's it's a, a very song. nice it's track. It's an instrumental version. It is, it but, is. But I never, I couldn't get good yeah, songs uh, there. You, the, the Rose Bowl team are here, you can ask them. You can ask them after the show. I mean, this is your 200th episode, right? <laughs> Yes, it's past. It's two past 200 yes. episodes. How do you feel right now? I mean, as a, I mean, how was the entire program? How I mean, the, you, the journey. Yeah, That's the what journey, I said. Yeah. I loved every episode. Okay. I love cooking and I love making a, uh, making a, a change, a difference in some people. Anyone who sees. If it's one person who sees it, two persons who sees it, whatever, they give me the feedback and I, I feel so happy uh, that I'm, I'm doing something good for others and the love, that's why I said, the love I get from uh, viewers and the love from people, uh, uh, it's probably because I deal with a common element as food. And uh, food is, that, like, like Pauline and everyone saying, food is something which um, unites everyone together. And that's what people probably, you, you wouldn't imagine the amount of love I get because of this show. I get so much of love and affection and everything, and I'm so happy because I do not have a personal thing. Is that um, I've lost my father and my brother and everyone in an accident. I don't have anyone to give me love, so I get a lot of love uh, through through uh, this show. You know, it's like honey; they just come and stick to me. Uh, they they just love what I'm doing on my show, on the way I educate them, on my, on my wall, the recipes I give and everything. And I find, oh God, there's, there's meaning, in my, uh, mean, meaning in my life. And I feel so, so thankful to God that he's given me life to be uh, able to be um, beneficial for others. Anyway, thank you all thank you. for thank you uh, coming. Much and having a wonderful time with me. I had the most awesome time with all of you and it's so beautiful uh, so that I could meet all of you. Um, I mean all of you, some of the you I have only met through uh, Facebook um, uh, um, and I'm so so happy that all of you shared your views and I hope we can meet once again. So cheers everyone, love you. Mwah. And, and, and thank you. <laughs> this final section is going to be the buffet section and I'm going to show you exactly how to be buffet savvy or how to deal with a buffet. Now there are a lot of people who love a buffet and they actually want to, uh, well, um, they see lots of food and they want to try everything together. But I will tell you some very, very easy and important tips. Um, you follow those tips and you will learn how to eat a buffet well. So the best thing first you do is never never opt for a buffet if you are super hungry because if you do that you tend to just pile on everything, eat all what you want and then what happens finally is that you end up with a totally totally bloated stomach and you won't enjoy your meal. Second thing is do not do not uh, have soda or um, carbonated drinks along with your uh, buffet because what happens is this fills you up with gas. The, uh, the, the, carb the carbonated drinks everything fills you up and you won't be able to eat much of the food which is served in the buffet. When you go for a buffet, okay, there are plates like these. These are called the serving stations. There are plates like these. Always take a fresh plate when you finish taking your first serving. So supposing uh, you first go for the salads, go to your um, respective table, eat everything or whatever you want, and then come back for a fresh plate. Do not use the same plate. It does not work like that. Because the first thing is people don't want to see uh, dirty plates coming in and out of the counter. Next thing is take very very small amounts 
if it's like rice, just a little bit, okay? Like this uh, pakoda, just take two or three pieces, that's it. Just take a little bit of um, uh, some of these items and go taste it in your, uh, on your table or uh, when you reach your table. Don't eat it while you are in the queue. And um, if you like it, you can come back for You can always keep coming back for more. But if you really uh, don't like it, you take a whole lot, you pile it on, and what happens is you just waste the food. So don't waste food. Just because you're paying for it doesn't mean that you have to waste food. That's not a good um, sign. Chef, uh, could you like to explain to us exactly what all is going on in the buffet? Like, first uh, of all, what do people actually go for okay. first? Uh, these are uh, we have uh, two welcome drinks here. Yeah. Uh, like we are uh, so, welcoming yes. the guest in with uh, some short of a drink. Uh, so we do have. Uh, I mean, we have a choice to go first for the drinks. Yeah. Uh, it is not a choice for going for a drink. It is an offering from our side. Welcoming the guests. Oh, okay. So uh, we have given a choice of uh, like one of uh, fruit fruit based one and one is of yogurt based one. Ah, okay. So is it always like that? Yeah. So we uh, like uh, we uh, go in in such a way that it should be uh, a, a bit refreshing. Okay. And uh, if the guest likes it, hmm. he can have it with, in a bigger glass ah. with whole of his meal. Then uh, we got. Uh, Salads yeah. here. Do, do we first go from We go the, for salads. Oh, so we first go from the welcome drinks to the salads? Yeah. And when does the soup come? Soup after comes that? after the salads. Okay. As if you have uh, you see this um, uh, French course of meal, mm. where you have hodos, hodos oh, is like salads, okay. oh. and then your soups come in. Like, so uh, here we have some raw condiments. Raw condiments just to uh, like, it's You've of your choice. Carrot sticks carrots and cucumber, tomatoes. Um, Today we got grilled chicken with uh, mustard wow. mayo. This this looks good. This looks good. Grilled chicken with mustard mayo. Yeah. Mm. That's nice. Uh, Honey, mustard, carrot, and pineapple. Uh, there is that one. Pineapple. Oh. Pineapple. Okay. okay. Raw uh, vegetable chart. Raw vegetable chart. Then That's uh, you got a, yeah. yeah. Uh, in this uh, in this thing, uh, we basically concentrated like. You'll have your choice of vegetables like carrot, onions, cucumber, or uh, the tomatoes. And we got three compound salads which are mixed with dressings. And you got one Indian chat, which is, an, anyways, like North Indian chat comes in place of a salad. And we got Arabic platter uh, with pickled vegetables, pita bread, and uh, today we got. Uh, Baba ganoush. Baba ganoush. Oh, yeah. this is Baba ganoush. I make Baba ganoush, but mine is a bit more, it has more um, spices in it. Mm. Okay. Uh, so we've got a Thai dasad. Yeah. That's a curd rice. Curd rice and a plain yogurt. So where do we go next? Next we'll go for soups. Okay. In soup section, uh, we have uh, two soups. Basically, like we give a choice of vegetarian and, and a choice of non-vegetarian. Today you have, a, for Top. the vegetarian, you have the tomato basil soup. And, and non chicken and egg drop soup for um, non vegetarian. Non vegetarian. And why? What's this? Uh, uh, we got two options of rice. Steam. One is uh, one is plain steam rice. Okay. And uh, always, one is always, always. Always there, there, there is a plain rice because yes, there I might know, be people who are not yes, uh, yes. having a lot of masalas exactly, and things. Exactly. And uh, we have a pulao rice. Uh, every day we put a different flavored pulao. No. Today we have mushroom, mushroom pulao here. Pulao. Okay, that's good. And uh, in here we got, in this section, we got four of non-veg. Non-veg, four non-veg. Okay. Today we have beef with caramel, caramel onion jus, pepper chicken, Pepper chicken, masala. like here also we are giving an uh, option for uh, mm, the guest mark. looks nice. Got lots of mustard in that too. <laughs> and then sh shai kurma, chicken kurma, shai chicken kurma. Okay. And nice. you have egg masala here. Egg masala. This looks uh, more like a paneer masala gravy. Yeah. Uh, yeah? 
paneer not not uh, that sweet paneer, sorry. no not that sweet version but uh, spicy savory yes. version here we have eight options of uh, vegetarian in which uh, you got one option of continental <coughs> eight options of vegetarian yeah okay um and uh, we have a special option like uh, you can go for chinese there is a special op option like chinese if you want uh, you got a chinese uh, non vegetarian rice Chinese non-veg rice and uh, you got Chinese fish non-veg gravy, yeah, fish and hot garlic sauce. I think everyone's favorite. Yeah. <laughs> and one more thing is, uh, in in all of these, there is a special thing like when you see this tag, mm -hmm. there is a specification that whether this dish is vegetarian or non-vegetarian. Okay. So. Uh, Tell me how that is. You got a you got a mark here. Uh huh. This represents the dish is purely vegetarian. Vegetarian. Okay. Is it is like is it uh, that way in every buffet? Uh, it is. It is like in keys we represent this thing. Oh, okay. Finally, <laughs> the everyone's favorite, the dessert section. Okay. Uh, desserts we uh, like basically like you got a uh, uh, one variety of. Uh, I'm a brownie. Any a cake, uh, any. any any sort of cake we we give, uh, every day it changes like. One time we give brownie or almond brownie or oh. a carrot cake okay. or some other vanilla cake or something else. Okay. And uh, like you here you always have fresh fruits. Fresh cut and fruits. And I think I think it's very necessary in any buffet to uh, 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 to include fresh fruits because lots of, all the most of all the people nowadays are very health conscious. So they after eating all that um, they would want to end with some fresh fresh uh, fruits instead of going for the usual uh, cakes and um, and uh, one more thing is foods. like uh, when you are planning a uh, uh, menu for a break uh, buffet uh, it is not like that you have to have a, a vast large spread mm. you yes. should you should ma uh, mainly we have to concentrate on like whether the guest is uh, having from the appetizers Till the uh, desserts, whether he is getting full of fiber or not, nutrition, starch, you have to calculate all those things. Okay. Then only you can so uh, frame up your more or less balanced. More or less balanced, so that, uh, anyways, a uh, guest is a god of us. Mm -hmm. So, when they come in, we are get feed. Yes. So yes. when you fe when you feed them healthily, then they will be much more happier much and more environment. Happier, and they'll come back even better. Yeah. More. So uh, Next, fresh cut fruits are very uh, like. It is very important to take those. So we have an option of like either either giving uh, uh, pineapple watermelon or uh, today we have papaya and papaya. pineapple. And I love I love fruits. Yeah. I just love. And uh, we in in the these sections we we have all always we segregate these like we have one desert from North Indian, one is from uh, continental, and one so will today be from we have a pumpkin, pumpkin halwa. halwa. This is a red pumpkin halwa. Yeah. Again, uh, this is from North Indian, okay. and we have a honey mousse today. Okay, okay. It is from Conti, yes. and you got two ice creams. Ice creams. Yeah, that everyone's favorite. Yeah, everyone please. Everyone will love an ice cream. Uh, so, so we have uh, orange flavor mm -hmm. and a strawberry flavor. Too. So, so the, these, what's the popular flavor? Because uh, basically, uh, in our hotel, people uh, repeatedly, uh, repeatedly ask this uh, vanilla with honey and nuts. Honey and nuts. And uh, the orange ice cream. Orange. orange ice cream and vanilla with honey and nuts is very, very popular. Actually, yeah. um, this spice go. Well, I mean, here. It is made of fresh pineapple. Okay. They are tossed in uh, ghee. Then we reduce the milk. Add it. Add the milk to that. So it's not condensed milk. No, no. no. Reduce. We, milk. we use uh, our own condensed milk. Oh, like so we condense. Reduce uh, we reduce the milk in our own kitchen and we. And, uh, and one more thing is we got a live counter. The live counter. So in this live counter, uh, like it will be much, much uh, more or uh, less option for your uh, this vast buffet. Mm. Like either uh, we'll do for like a grill, which is a uh, quick snack, or which is belly filling. If do if you are uh, very much tired and you don't want to have uh, bulgy yes, food, yes. so you can go for this option. Mm. And how is much this? do you charge per buffet? Uh, we charge 375 plus tax per buffet. In the dinner. Plus tax. Per, per, per head. Per head in the dinner. Thank you very much, uh, Chef. Thank you very much. It was a wonderful, wonderful experience to cook with you okay. <laughs> and uh, to have um, all everyone at Keynes were very warm and friendly, yeah. and you gave us the best.
Thank you. Every much. way. Thank you. Very much. Uh, in every way, you were very, very patient and tolerant yeah. um, because we we spent the whole day out here, and um, everything was perfect. So we thank you so much, Chef, um, all the people behind it, the staff, the GM, everyone. A big thank you from Rose Bowl. Thank you. And a big thank you from me. We. Um, we bless you and we wish you all the best for the future. I'm sure lots of people will come here. The buffet is absolutely great out here. And uh, it's my pleasure uh, getting a chance working with this, uh, this, good, uh, this good knowledgeable lady. Okay. So, and uh, it is a, a, a very pleasure of uh, Keys Hotel. Anytime you come, you'll be our friend. Thank and you. a good, you'll be, uh, you'll be a good friend of us. More than a guest. Yes, <laughs> I like want to be a is, friend more than it a is, guest. It is like in Keys Hotel, uh, we are not... You don't uh, treat them as guests, but you treat them as friends. It, as if we are uh, people... And one family. Yeah, one family. Yes. So, time to wind up the show. And thank you all for joining this wonderful, wonderful episode of JG's Cookbook. Thank you all for being there and absolutely making this a possibility, a reality. And um, making me a success all because of you, you, my viewers. Um, your love, prayers, support, everything has made what JG's Cookbook is today. And I, with the grace of God, want to continue to be a benefit, everything, everything possible, um, uh, what I can for all of you. So, cheers and 